morning. I'm sitting here wondering what to paint this morning. Um, and I normally paint what I like, not what anybody else does. And having a little chat with Maxim, one of my subscribers, that uh, landscapes don't sell well these days. Well, that's probably true. Um, but I, I've done abstracts in the past and I enjoy doing them, but it's not really what floats my boat. It's, it's mostly English landscape, uh, Scottish, British, UK landscape. Because of the climate, the, the amount of rain we get from the uh, coming across the Atlantic and the, the, the Atlantic drift, keeping parts of the coast warmer than average. And it gives this this wonderful greenness and, and uh, flurry bundle, I suppose you would call it. And I was looking through uh, the internet on for English meadows. And, well, they're, they're so beautiful and probably been done to death, but but I'm going to have a go at one in, uh, in acrylic with the sponges. And I've, I've not prepared this piece of paper. I've just uh, pinned it on my board. It's uh, the Canson watercolour paper, which I don't really find suitable for what, the way I use wet in wet. But it's very good. It's a very good surface for, for acrylics. So I'm not going to do a sky other than what peeks through the meadow and, and the, the, the surrounding trees. Predominantly, predominantly green, but a good start would probably be to stipple it with a la, uh, with a, with a red a mixture of red and black, just to give a uh, a base, a ground colour. So I'm going to do that, and we know we are going to go and get some more black paint. I'm running out here. Oops! I just squeezed some out. I'm not going to show you my palette because you know what it is by now. The thing is, I forget to zoom back to to the the painting, and I leave you watching the uh, palette. I'm remixing the palette for for ages, so I'm not going to risk it. So I've got a lot of red, a lot of black. So I'm going to just go. Or I can make a bit green. I've got to go and buy some more paint. So I'll just. Just coat the paper. This will also prime it. Let me get more green. There's a Class Olsen shop in uh, the in Croydon, which sells a, a range of cheaper acrylics. Now that's interesting, isn't it? That's hardly green. Right, I'll just put out some more mid yellow. Choose this. And once I've got the, the nice depths of greens, I can start putting other other stuff in. But I like mixing reds with my greens because it gives that contrast, that, that complementary colour with the, 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 the red flowers, poppies, and and there's going to be a lot of poppies in this one. I can tell you. Sorry about the noise. Be nice and nice and nice and dark. That should do. It's certainly quicker than painting, but it's all the fiddling around you have to do as you go along to make this into a into a painting. Let's get some nice reds. As it darkens, it will take more paint. It won't soak into the paper, the porous paper. So you can do it with two hands. Huh? But it's, it's a great way of, of painting. And uh, I'm, I'm doing this because I love watching Terry Harrison in the old days when he used to demonstrate for the art club I belonged to for many years. He was a regular. And he was so entertaining, one of the best demonstrators I've ever seen. 
I do three demonstrations in, a, in an evening session. So it's good value. We're always we're willing to contribute a bit extra to make up the shortfall in the funds. Well, there we are. We've got an abstract. Right. Uh, okay, let's go darker now with the greens. I've got good prize. I want a couple, I don't, I don't want any of the white showing through of the paper. I don't want to cover it, we can start putting some sky in and some lighter greens and dark greens. Nice dark. Oh, I'll add a bit of blue into that as well, just to bring the changes. Well, we've done a few watercolours the last few days. We've been to Scotland and Dorset. I was looking earlier at the uh, some Cornish photos, Cornish coast, and I love Cornwall. I've been there so many times. Well, lots of photographs. Well, I do occasionally use photographs off the internet, but uh, I change it, do different things. Just use use them as a guide to base your own paintings on. Don't copy. Change the, invent your skies, invent your seascape part. Now, I'm going to put the shadow, more the shadow over it in this part of the picture here. Put some reds in there. I'll re clip the paper. Very messy business. This is expanding now, it's soaking up the paint. But I'll just keep it flat. I hope I don't have to do anything with the brush on this, but I might have to do put a few little bits, bits in. Alright, uh, let's get some greens in the top one. this one in uh, one session we'll see how we go so it takes so long to upload but we have got a bit of a slope we're putting here okay new sponge This will dry very quickly. I, I can increase the dry speed. Let's put a bit of sky in there. I like to mix a little bit of alizarin with my ultramarine. some of the stuff, I don't want it all to poke through, but...
So it's just a little bit, open up some of this here just a little bit. Okay. Right. Get the other sponge. And we'll put some lighter greens in now. Because they're greens rather than yellows, but I've only got lemon yellow and this mid yellow. Right, so let's, let's change, put some greens in there now. away. Things are starting to happen. Now, I'm adding some whites in the mix, so we get a grey green as well. We need to move the sponge into different directions and to give up an impression of randomness. Now, we'll put some leaves back in. Right now, we've got dark greens in here. Right, let me clip this again. Now I've no idea what this is going to turn out to be like. But I, I was inspired to paint these sort of meadows oh, a couple of years ago, oh, it might have been last year, where our local parks have been creating little meadow areas and they're, they're so, so attractive. Just a few square yards, metres. But they were so so lovely with the poppies and cornflowers and daisies. I don't know technical names for, for these sorts of things. But, 
See, that's, that's, how, that's the sort of base. How's it coming on? Yeah, a little bit's showing through. Um, wonder if I used a bit of a bit of uh, lemon yellow. See if that can make a bit of difference to the range of yellows. Well, it should do, shouldn't it? That's a bit of lemon yellow. But I want some green green up here. And this is all, all in shadow. Put some warm in warm sienna in there, eh? Just to warm some of the areas up here. I'll put darks back, I'm just trying to build up a surface. But I don't want all that dark to disappear. I'll put the blue back in a minute. Now I can put some trunks of trees in there, here and there. Right, let's go back with the, the yellows. Now I don't want that to look mannered, like regular shapes. I might put in some brushwork. But I can't, I haven't got that sort of yellow, that deep cadmium yellow deep. Put some bit of texture paste in there, which I have on the palette. I hope this painting doesn't end up being too dark. Yeah, this yellow is more green than yellow, isn't it? Anyway. They like those Chinese paintings you see. These are just in more indistinct because these are going to be in shadow. It's also the gentle touch and, and make, look, you see what's happening, it's uneven. So we'll go over that. So it's largely, it's a mess, of course. Oh, look at that. So, wedges of light. Just 
a little bit catching the light up here. Get some bits of light here. It's coming through those where I'm going to put the sky back. Now we've got some darker green, dark greens here on that tree on the right, but I don't want them to be too dark because um, they won't uh, register, but let's get those in. Really just to contrast with the greens, but I, it's going to be darker there. Oops. I'm using no water. paint is really thin enough. It's been soaking up the water through the membrane for a few days. The, the, the stove wet pallets, they last most a long time. So this is our Right, I'm just using the edge of the ooh, one edge of the sponge, not two. So I think we have some trees. Then I'll go and cover them up again. Right, clean the sponge. Try to keep the paint off my jeans. Right, 
of my head. Mm. So when it gets into your nails, I carry a large thumbnail here, mainly because I do play the guitar from time to time. And, uh, but I'm better at painting than playing the guitar. Right, uh, if I bend the sponge, uh, and get some, I'll just clean, clean up some of this palette, and then I'll go put the light back into, into the uh, trees. Get the colours. Well, I don't want it too bright, or at least too blue. I mean, yeah. Now I don't want to put it. I don't want a lot of this. Just to, oh well, that was too much. <laughs> See how bright that that is now. Because it's contrasting with the with the dark green. Also, I can break up some of my regular patterns, which I don't like. So. Okay, just a little bit more light in there. That I've got a wouldn't be sky coming through the uh, trunk with the so uh, I'm not gonna mix a bit of alizarin with the blue to give uh, another colour of sort of corn type flowers, but just just a little uh, little bit, and I do a great wedge. When we put the reds in, it's going to the poppies. Uh, some, this might go a bit lighter. We should use ones in the foreground. Now, none of these are going to be portraits of any flowers that exist in any book. They're just an impression. They're just dots of colour. 
they're not poppies, oh, they're not um, bluebells. But they could be, couldn't they? So maybe they are. Right, so let's use a bit more alizarin and red. Alizarin red and an ultramarine. Uh, so these are, I think, the sort of bluebells. But I'm working from a paint, from a photograph. But I can't show you it because it's, it's online and uh, don't be accused of plagiarism. Well, this isn't going to be anything like what I'm doing. Well, I'm copying, I mean. This is just too good not to have a go at. Right, there's uh, some more in here. Some light in there, more light bits and pieces. Uh. Well, I'm going to be washing rugby this afternoon. It'll be Scotland, be Japan, and after Japan's fantastic win over the South Africans on Friday. I'm cheering for Japan. Sorry Scotland, but... Uh... Okay, now we've got to clean enough the sponge and we'll have a go at some reds. Oh, it's okay. Do my hand on my watercolour? Cloth. Um, clean the palette so we've got sorry the, the nice red. What I have actually. Sorry if I'm mumbling, but it's just a case of making yourself a cup of tea, pouring out a glass of wine and or and just after a hard day just, just watching. Right. Lots of these poppies. If you want to, uh, a red to look redder, put it next to greens. I'll just have to pour out some more. Squeeze out some more. Ah. <coughs> I always have a pair of pliers handy to take the lids off. That's it. I'll show you my palette, but I won't move the camera because you know what will happen. Well, there's my palette. Great, eh? Whoops. See how, how the, the blue ran, that's the cerulean. It's picked up a lot of uh, moisture from below. So I use that cerulean in that uh, painting I did of, of Weymouth, looking across Weymouth Bay in a storm. I enjoyed doing that. Mixed reception because it was a bit different. Couldn't put a bit of a lizard in with that as well, make it some darker. And if you want to make it lighter, 
some view of it. Isn't it? Too many here. No one or two don't want to compete in against the Individual ones, larger in the foreground. Just thought of the shape of the sponges. And some darker ones. Right, now we'll put in some, I don't really like that, that's got a little bit of rye in it, so we'll change that in a minute when that's dried up a bit. Put some more lighter blues. Covering up that, that's not right, that should be yellow really. Right, so some lighter ones here. Right, go back with the yellows now. Clean the palette a little bit. I think we're not too far from actually finishing this. So I want to put some dark green back again. Some greens back in there now, so let's just
where the sun, where the the sky is poking through. It's a good idea to put some lighter greens. Show the light, just illuminating some some of the leaves in there. I just wanted to put that dark back, back in, in there. Right, so the lemon yellow white. Oops. Just on here, just showing. The light coming through there. What does that look like? Ah, oh, that's. I, I, I had to look in the uh, camera to see to see that bit. Does that need it any more light in those trees? Probably does. My water is disgusting now. Careful where I put my my sky. No, put the dark back there. Well, I don't think I'm going to do any better than that at this stage. So, uh, I'll just uh, put the dark back in there. Right, okay. So, I'm going to put that in the mount. I'll, well, I'll sign it, but I don't know if it's worth signing. But it's, a, it's an example of... Um, using sponges to, to, to paint complicated scenes. So I'll just sign that. Uh, right, that's the only bit of brush we've used on it. So it's an impression. Uh, I don't know if it's a, any good. You can let me know. I'm going to put it in the mount just to have a look to see to see what we've got here. So English, English meadow. Uh, the light mount probably. So, so there we are. Um, 
it would obviously be easy to paint these puppies and things with with the brush because you can it's more accurate the sponge is very hit and miss as you as you've seen right let's uh, zoom in and we'll, we'll have a have a look Let's go that side there. So it's quite amazing what you can accomplish with a sponge. It's certainly enjoyable to do and with acrylic because it dries so quickly you can overwork very quickly which does does help. I was going to do watercolour but I don't know, I do like this sort of thing, it's different. So I suppose a landscapes uh, not being so popular as they once were, you've got to find different ways of doing them, more modern ways maybe, more uh, mystery rather than slavish copies because really anybody can do a slavish copy of everything given, given enough time and a bit of skill but it's it's the atmosphere about something that that really is is the way to go and there's no limit to our imaginations well there is a mine but anyway let's zoom out and i'll go and upload this uh, so i hope you enjoyed that thanks for watching see you later bye